what to do when buying a bike. Two stroke man. Hi guys, in this video we're going to show you how to check over a used motocross bike. So first of all you want to have a conversation with the person you're buying the bike from to see what work has been done, if it needs any work and how long they've had it. So when you get to the bike, have a good look over it and look at its general condition. So you want to see if the bike has an hour meter, if it doesn't, which you won't find one on this bike, you want to check for wear on the fork legs, the clamps, the frame and the engine covers. When you get to the bike, you want to make sure the engine is freezing cold. If the engine is warm, it's quite suspect that there could be some cold start issues. Now you should start the bike and listen for any unwanted noises. If you're not sure what you're listening for, bring a mechanic with you or buy off a well-established dealer. To check the age from the frame number, there are plenty of websites you can use or call the manufacturer and find out yourself. Unless the bike is electric start, you want to check to see how much compression the bike has. And this is how you do it. You're looking to see how hard it is to push the kickstart down. If it's easy, it definitely needs some engine work. So when you push the kickstart down, Especially on a 252 stroke, you should feel a lot of resistance. On a 125, not so much. If it doesn't have much resistance, this is a sign that the engine doesn't have a lot of compression. So if you can, check to see if the air filter is clean. Like this one here. That's how you want your air filter to be, and that's also how you want your air box to be. Nice and clean so that it can suck in no dirt, which can cause problems with the engine and wear the engine out quicker. Now you want to check your engine oil level and your coolant level. If you're allowed to test ride the bike, first of all, you want to check the clutch, make sure it's not dragging or slipping. You want to try all the gears to make sure there is power through all the gears and it's not jumping out of gear. And also to make sure that both the brakes are working perfectly. You want to check to see if the throttle cable is nice and smooth. If it's rough, it could need replacing. Now we're going to check for wheel bearing play. You can do this by moving the wheel side to side. This one is nice and tight. And again, this one is nice and tight. Now we're going to check for the swing arm, shock and linkage bearings. When the bike is on a stand, you want to lift the swing arm up and down, checking for play. So now I'm going to move the swing arm up and down to check the play. This one is fine. You want to check the discs and the pads. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth and no lips on the edge and that there is material either side on the brake pads. Now we need to check the wheels. You want to spin them up like so to make sure they're not buckled or there isn't any dents in the rim, which is quite common. You then want to check for any broken spokes either side. This wheel is perfect. Now you want to check the tires. You want to make sure there's a good amount of material in the middle make sure it's not smooth, which we call road ripped, and that the edge of the tires are all intact and not cracked. Now you want to check the chain and sprockets. Bear in mind that these are a common wear item, so be prepared to buy some new ones. Now we're gonna check the chain guide to make sure that there is plenty of material around the chain. Now you wanna check your chain slider to make sure it hasn't worn through the material onto the swing arm. And you also want to make sure that the chain roller is spinning around. Now you want to check for any rips in the seat cover and make sure all the plastics are correctly fitted 
with no brakes. Now you want to lean the bike over to check for any leaks coming from the engine. You want to check the underneath condition of the frame and also underneath the forks for any damage or cracks. So now you want to be checking for any leaks on the suspension. So you want to push the forks up and down like this and have a visual look and put your hand and run it down there for any leaks. Also the same with the rear shock. Now you want to check and make sure that the rear mud guard lines up with your rear wheel. If it doesn't, there is a good chance it has a bent subframe or it could just need a new rear fender. On the front, you want to check the same with the front mud guard. If it's not in line, there is a chance it could have bent handlebars or bent forks in the clamps. When buying a bike privately and it's all checked over, if it needs a bit of work, you can sometimes negotiate a bit better on the price and get yourself a deal. On the other hand, if you like what you see and it's in your budget, go for it. If you found this video helpful, please like and share with your friends. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe.